Good morning to everyone. I'm Luca Lodi, and I'm going to present you a joint work with my colleagues Mario Biggeri, Tiziana Di Stefano, and Adam Francescutto. We are honored to present our research funded by the European Union, and today we are going to discuss about SDG and the material footprint, the challenges of a circular economy in the EU. Modern economies are facing critical issues such as rising inequality and environmental degradation. These are not just challenges for our generation, but they threaten the long-term prosperity and sustainability of our economic system. Our focus is on the EU current and anticipated dependencies on materials, especially in the context of a low-carbon energy transition. The circular economy, which emphasizes reuse, repair and recycling, offers a solution. By moving away from the linear take-make-dispose model to a circular one, we can reduce the dependence on external resources and foster sustainability patterns of production and consumption. This shift is crucial for improving several sustainable development goals. The European Commission has prioritized the transition to a circular economy as part of its 2019-2024 mandate, with the European Green Deal leading the charge. The Circular Economy Action Plan, adopted in 2020, is a key component and its endeavour aiming to reduce pressure on natural resources while creating sustainable growth and jobs. It is a prerequisite for the EU's 2050 climate neutrality target and to add biodiversity loss. The EU Circular Economy Action Plan is the cornerstone of the European Green Deal. The CEAP outlined 35 actions, encompassing both legislative and non-legislative measures. These actions are designed to create a sustainable product policy framework, address key product value chains, and promote the ethos of less waste, more value. The plan is comprehensive, targeting not just the industry and market practices, but also aiming to make the circular economy beneficial for people, region, and cities. It includes cross-cutting action and position the EU as a global leader in this effort. An integral part of the plan is to focus on monitoring progress to ensure that the action taken are effective and on track. Monitoring the impact and effectiveness of the Circular Economy Action Plan is crucial. For this, a robust monitoring framework updated in 2023 by Eurostat is in place. This framework tracks progress across five thematic areas using multiple indicators. These areas include production and consumption, waste management, secondary raw materials, competitiveness and innovation, and global sustainability and resilience. The 2023 revision of the framework has added critical indicators like material footprint and resource productivity, consumption footprint in relation to planetary boundaries, greenhouse gas emission from production activities, and material dependency focusing on import dependence. These indicators are vital for assessing the EU transition towards a more sustainable circular economy. In this paper, we want to study the challenges, interconnection and feasibility of integrating sustainable development goals, material footprint and circular economy within the European Union context. In particular, our focus is on the current and anticipated use dependency of materials from the rest of the world in the context of a low carbon energy transition. To pursue our goals, we are going to use an input-output analysis in order to study the material intensity, which means the ratio of raw materials in tons with respect to the total output in terms of monetary values. This procedure allows us to compare domestic and international structure of the economy. We are going to develop several scenarios in order to understand the possible implication of a circular economy transition. The data sources are from the Gloria multi-regional input-output database, which allows us to investigate on 164 regions, in, uh, including uh, developed, developing LDC countries. And also we can check the difference uh, within uh, between 19 different industries. For what concerns the scenario, we start with a business as usual, in which we consider just the economic growth and not change in the other, uh, in the other dimension, like uh, progress, international trade, and technology. Then we will develop a scenario considering material efficiency, so the reduction in the use of, of the material intensity. We look at the international balance, so the changing structure of structural trade, and then we try to mix these two <clears throat> scenarios to see the implication. The theoretical framework is based on the work of Lanzan et al. 2022, which allows us to measure the material footprint and the domestic structure 
of raw materials in an input-output context and allows also us to decompose the affecting cons domestic consumption footprint, imports and exports. For the moment, we present you just uh, the results for one materials. In this case, we use crude oil. As we can see, in the, the change in between 2015 and 2020 are not relevant in terms of volume and especially of geography. But the interesting part is that, for instance, for this material, almost the trading pattern for the EU countries are not European, which is particularly important for the application, especially in the worldwide consequence of the European or the EU sustainable transition to a circular economy system. To understand more the mechanism here, the changing structure of material footprints, we are going to run a structural decomposition analysis, which allows us to decompose the total, the total output changes, looking at the intensity effect, the Leontiev effect, which is a technological effect, and a demand effect that looks at the consumption pattern. The preliminary result we obtained from crude oil shows that the European Union slightly dropped the total output in crude oil. But looking at decomposing the element of this change, we can see that mostly is driven by the technological improvement. While for what concerns the consumption pattern, that especially in the period between 2020 and 2022, there, is, there was an increase of the consumption of of fossil fuels. Until now, we run just the business as usual scenario for which we project uh, the input output table until 2030. And what we can see for what concerns crude oil is that uh, there is going to be an increase if uh, nothing changes in the technological structure or in the uh, international trade uh, network, especially for countries like Western Asian countries, which are largely endowed of fossil fuels. And to conclude, I'm going to discuss the next step we're going to take to proceed in our research. So for sure, we're going to define the more accurate scenarios, including change in resource usage, technology improvement, and also the implication of a variation in trade, path, in trade patterns. Then we want to understand and investigate deeply the third country effect, or in other words, the implication that a transition to a circular economy system have on extra EU countries. And the other effort is to link our results, our results with the Sustainable Development Goal and the Agenda 2030. Thanks for your attention. I'm here to listen to your comments and suggestions.